Welcome to Build. I'm Laura Haywood. Today's guest is a bona fide superstar. Legendary television shows from Taxi to Evening Shade, 10 best selling books, a multitude of movies, and a world famous memory that defies logic. Mary Lou Henner is like 20 human beings in one body. She's currently starring in the brand new Broadway musical Getting the Band Back Together as Sharon Papadopoulos, AKA Mitch's mom, eight times a week at the Belasco Theater. We have so much to discuss. Guess. Mary Lou Henner will be right out. First, here's a look at getting the band back together. What a fun time on Broadway. Thank you. Welcome back to New York. Thank you so much. I'm you, having such a great time. Oh my gosh. You are rocking out. You're like the rock and roll mom. I know. Getting the band like, back together. My wardrobe, everything. Yeah, you're wearing a Guns N' Roses shirt. Well, I know. I know. What well, we say, you sing about Guns N' Roses uh -huh. on the show. We, we mention all these great rockers in one of the numbers that I do. Uh, the one, actually, that I sort of uh, lead off. The uh -huh. What Would Joe Perry Do number. So uh, I just, you know, it's just so much fun to play this character because Ken Davenport, who just won the Tony for Once on this Island, he's such an extraordinary producer, and this has been a labor of love. He spotted me at a, an opening four years ago. He offered me the part, and that was it. We just, uh, we've done a few workshops of it and then all of a sudden we're on Broadway so yeah well exciting. and the show's been in the works for a lot longer than that yeah some of your ensemble members have been working on it for 10 years I know I know it's crazy yeah but they you know everybody who gets involved with this show you just you fall in love with the characters you fall in love with the humor and one another and then you throw somebody like you know John Rando who won the Tony for director. Uh, yeah the director who won the Tony for uh, you're in town and mm -hmm. he directed on the town and and Mark Ellen wrote this great music so it's it's just, we, every night we get to go there and it's like a party. The audiences, they're immediately on their feet when the show ends and, and they just, they love it. Well, we saw in the clip them dancing in the, in the aisles. I know, uh, I know. The music is so catchy. It is, it's very catchy. Yeah. Even though, you know, it's original, but it's, right? it, you, 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 you know, there are certain songs that really ring true and, and you can't stop thinking about them or singing them. This show actually had its roots in sort of an improv style back in the early days. By the time that you came onto the team uh, four years ago, was there still any improvisation going on or was it pretty well scripted? Well, a little bit. The character had a different last name and because I'm Greek, mm -hmm. They made her Greek, and they made her, you know, uh, and so there's like, they get a lot of mileage out, out of our last name, which is Papadopoulos. Uh -huh. And so, you know, just little things here and there. And then the fact that, um, I mean, Sharon didn't have a song before, so I get to do the song about Joe Perry and, you know, just oh my gosh, a lot of the dancing. Oh, my gosh, a great number, too. It's a great number. And I think that people know you. Your face is so familiar from your on-screen work, um, and everybody's seen the 60 Minutes pieces <laughs> on you and your memory. But I don't think, I think there are a lot of people who don't realize how deep your musical theater roots go. Oh, I, mean, you I, I never thought I'd do anything else. I really thought that that was it. I was going to grow up in Chicago, have this crazy upbringing with a dancing school in the backyard, a beauty shop in our kitchen, mm -hmm. art classes going on upstairs. My, my uncle was the neighborhood astrologist. He ran a cat hospital on the roof. I mean, I grew up in such a crazy <laughs> way yeah. that people say, well, how'd you get into show business? And I'm always saying, are you kidding? Show business is boring compared to the way I grew right. up. Yeah, I mean, we didn't even have, our kitchen was set up like a hair salon. The, the refrigerator was in the basement and in its place in the kitchen was a blue hair drying chair. <laughs> And the nuns used to come over for stretch classes. <laughs> My mom would go to the convent and cut their hair there. And then she'd take them to Vassarette to go bra shopping. So, I mean, we, we had backstage passes to Catholicism and, you know, just had like a wacky upbringing. So, of course, I ended up in show business. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah. I feel like, why hasn't there been a musical based <laughs> on your life? Nobody would yeah. believe it. You know, I, I was going to do it as a television series, but at uh -huh. one point they thought there were too many characters because this was a long time ago. Now I could probably do it because look at Modern Family, yeah. you know. So. Don't you think, what if you, there was a show about your youth that was called Little Miss Memory? <laughs> <laughs> Little, Miss, Little Univac, yeah, Memory. 
memory isn't girl. Isn't that what they called you? Yeah, Little Miss Memory. So I actually, you probably remember, I met you years and years ago when I was in a previous gig, and you said to me, give me a date right? Uh, in your lifetime, and you told me what you were doing on that date. Right. I'm curious whether you give me the same answer now. Okay, give me the date. It was the, the day. day I was born, mm-hmm. April 28th, 1979. Okay, April 28th. 19, uh, April 28th, 1979 was a Sunday. I mean, a Saturday. But yeah, it was a Saturday, 1979, right? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I know. You that, don't know what day of the week I don't know what day born? of the week I was born in, but I know that what you told me you were doing that day. I was with John Trolta. Was that? I'm going to show you this. Okay. Maybe I don't. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was. I was. We, we were dating then. You were yeah. like, I was with Johnny. Yeah, I was and Johnny. And I was like, oh, who's Johnny? And you were like, yeah. oh, you know, John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was And that's not magic. That's no, just it's the way not your magic. brain works. Up in, Sa- up in Santa Barbara. Well, I was in my second season of Taxi, too. Uh-huh. And so, yeah. It was, yeah, that was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> no regrets, ever. No regrets. So I'm guessing you've never missed a line on stage. Okay, I'm glad you're bringing this up. This is why I never made the taxi gag reel. And this pissed me off <laughs> because by the time I got the fourth season, I'd say, wait a minute, I'm why? not in any no of these bloopers. gag reels. So that's it. Fifth season, I was determined to mess up lines, end up in that gag reel. So, yeah. So you messed them right. up, what, on purpose? Why not? <laughs> No, I didn't mess them up on purpose, but I would, you know, sort of not, just find other ways to get into the gag reel. You let yourself play a little bit. Yeah, I let myself play a little bit. This seems like the kind of cast that probably plays together a lot. Oh my gosh, we go out afterwards sometimes and we just love each other. You know, it's funny. You know how everyone has like an essence? Everyone has some filter through which they see their lives. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe that my filter is family. I love family. I came from a big family. Mm-hmm. I, you know, every group of people that I get involved with, whether it's the taxi group or the doing the Broadway show Chicago or Greece was a huge family for me. I look for a family, that family feeling, and this is definitely one of those experiences that lends itself to creating a family. I remember um, you, when Hamilton came through L.A., you tried to kind of become a part of their family. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, you know, they were this close to a restraining order. I mean, <laughs> first of all, I lived so close, and so I kept buying tickets. I, I was crazy with the day the tickets went on sale. And I could, probably could have gotten house seats through publicists or whatever, but my brother and I sat there with four <laughs> credit cards. You know, we were like, okay, we got them. We got them good seats for the 18th of October, you know, which is actually when I went. But, but so, you know, we just kept buying tickets and I thought, what am I, nuts? I'm paying $600. I mean, it was like, I, I said, nobody's getting Christmas presents this year because I bought a bunch of Hamilton tickets. You know? <laughs> did you at least take those people as their No, not friends? always. <laughs> <laughs> not always. No, I did. Actually, the way I got to see Hamilton was um, I, I did something uh, for the Schuberts. They wanted me to go down to New Orleans to, to sort of host a Broadway afternoon thing with people doing numbers and stuff. And they said, well, okay, so what's your fee? And I went, no, tickets to Hamilton. That's my fee. Just get me tickets to Hamilton because they were so hard to get. I went to one of Lynn Manuel's last performances. Well, so I mean, see that, the that's company. better than any salary that I know that they could pay for you. sure. For nice sure. work on that one. Yeah, it was just like flew out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I said in in my intro, you're like 20 lifetimes of human oh, well. existence, and you're still in your prime, and you're doing all these Thank things, you. and you know. And I look back, and there, I keep thinking of and discovering new things you've done. Like oh. I'm like, oh yeah, she was on Dancing with the Stars. Yes, yeah, Dancing with you the know? Stars. And I then know. and then I was. Like, oh yeah, she was on Celebrity Apprentice twice, the and first and then the All Stars. Well, right. I mean, it's been back in the news this week. <laughs> your season. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. And, um, and like ever since I first learned about your memory, I was like, oh, she better not end up being a witness against anybody in court. Oh, because- that's funny you're saying that because two after my depositions on two cases. The entire case was settled, thrown out, et cetera, because they said, no way can this girl go to court. No way. We're going to lose. If she, if she speaks and she has the, you know, the specific details the way she does. So, so are there any details from Celebrity Apprentice? Well, like so many. We us? only have 20 minutes, and we've probably used up, like, half the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely had a blast on that show, and that's <laughs> all I'll say. I made a lot of money for both Alzheimer's and for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Yeah. You know. I really appreciate how committed you become to uh, Alzheimer's and other memory related yeah. uh, causes as a result of your superpower. I mean, there's no other word for it. Well, and like I'm annoying is what my husband would call it. <laughs> so, I, I, let me see if I, I remember this quote correctly. He yes. says, every 
uh, no man ever wins an argument with his wife, but at least I have a good reason. Yes, I have an excuse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, excuse. You have a good memory. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I did a lot of reading about you and a lot of listening to other interviews that you've done. And yeah. you have so many great stories. Um, I, I'm just excited at the opportunity to... Oh, thank you. you about well, you know, you, I think a lot of, you know, my doing a lot of different things comes from the spirit of my mother, who was, as I told you, a dancing teacher, you know, and she was, she was the beautician of the neighborhood, the hairdresser of the neighborhood. So I think having that kind of entrepreneurial spirit is something that I just grew up with, and I knew that I wanted to write, and I knew that I wanted to be a mother, and I didn't think I'd have three husbands, but, you know, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the third and final, and he's the love of my life. And you told me that you've had some, you, you still have good relationships with all of them. Oh, like, all of them. Like oh, one got, of your... Opening night uh, flowers from all of them. Yeah, yeah. That's no, so no, I have amazing. great. I you still great visit with their kids who See, have I, no biological relation to yeah. you, and I just think that's so wonderful. You know, when you love somebody in your life and you love them for a period of time, why would you ever want to lose them? Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe other people don't feel this way, but I invite all my ex-husbands to my weddings. I do. That's not a lie. You seem no. like a woman who has a lot of love to give. Like well, no, no shortage. Know, I don't sleep a lot. Do, well, I was going to ask you. Like I've never really encountered anybody who seems to have so much natural energy do you energy. crash energy any? oh energy uh, my husband uh. says uh, there's a switch it's on or it's off it's like i could you, i could be talking and it's like okay i'm going to sleep now you know and i'm out mm -hmm. that kind of thing so can you talk a little bit about some of these the um testing that you've allowed yourself to go through sure um, it's so interesting because the testing's ongoing they're still looking for people they haven't found that many people and there's kind of a gradient uh there are people in the 99 percentile and people in like you know different percentiles and uh the testing well the, the physiological testing is that they, they wire us, they put us through an MRI, they take 300 measurements of our brains, and they have found nine areas 10 times larger than the normal brain. Mm -hmm. But if I've answered thousands and thousands and thousands of questions. And, you know, they'll call me up every once in a while and say, okay, we've got a new test, we'd like to test you on this. And so, you know, it's, I've already signed papers to say I'm giving my brain to science. Although my brother's like, what? Are you kidding? They're going to be like Nardos in the next room. You know, it's like, why, why would you do that? It's like, because maybe it'll help people. Yeah. You know, but it, it is. I mean, they, they, they check out the neural, neural pathways and try to figure out uh, where everything, you know, why it fires up a certain way. Mm -hmm. And there's no, you know, they have identical twins. One has it. One has HSAM, highly superior autobiographical memory, and the other one doesn't. Oh, weird. So, yeah. Identical twins. Identical twins. Oh, that those are the brains that need to get donated to science. I know. And you can figure out the difference. I mean, I, I, I think when you're one of six kids, you're so grateful for anything that that makes you seem a little different from your brothers and sisters. Yeah. So I, I worked it. You know, I love <laughs> having this unusual memory as a little girl. You know, so, yeah. Do you ever so feel like a party trick? Like when people come up, like I just did, and say, like, tell me what happened on my birthday. Yeah. You know? Um, no, it's, it's kind of fun, you know. But I, I always feel like if, if I... See, I really do believe that everything that you've ever been through is on your emotional hard drive. It makes you behave in certain ways, and it's all there. Mm -hmm. And if I... Re, you know, if I sort of re-trigger it in some way, you know, because uh, let's face it, you could be getting a massage, you could smell something, you could hear something, and then all of a sudden you'll go like, ooh, yeah, I remember, why, oh my gosh, why did that memory pop, pop into my brain? So it's all there. We just happen to have an extraordinary retrieval system, mm -hmm. the people who have HSAM. When so. I think about the 60 Minutes piece that I first saw on you, I remember being amazed and I also remember your shoe closet <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like don't you are, don't you have a very specific way of sorting your shoes uh well you know I, I like color coordination but but also yes I the, the right foot points one way the left foot points the other way because then it makes a perfect little rectangle and you can get more pairs per shelf <laughs> <laughs> even when I'm in a hotel I'll do that so it's like all Nice and organized, but I don't have OCD. I didn't. I didn't test for OCD. I mean, I, they tested me for OCD. I don't have it. Yeah, I've heard that no. HSAM is sometimes think considered it's, related. People are trying to figure out what it is by putting a label on it and making it universal. I I don't think that they can, and they can. You know, they want to check off all the boxes. Mm -hmm. And everything else. Do yeah. you get? Does it bug you when other people can't remember things? Like if someone I'm in your so used show to it now. flubbed a line, oh. would you be like, nope? Like, can you do? You, you have the whole script in your. You must have the whole script in your head. Yeah. I, in fact, I, as an actress, I don't want to get so rote with something. So I'll do different line readings just because I want to make it. It's fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, I always want to feel like I'm really 
right there. It's funny, one of the questions I get asked all the time is about memorizing lines. Mm -hmm. It must be very easy for you to memorize lines. And I always say, well, that's two-dimensional, but you know, I'll read a script and know where I was when I read it and what the weather was like and you know, what day it was and things like that. And then th the other question I get asked is, what about bad memories? Yeah. And because memory is tied to adrenaline, you remember the highs and the lows of your life. I'm trying to bring back all the little middle-of-the-road right. memories for people because I think that that's so important. You know, try to remember those little moments from childhood. And right. Like we all that. remember the best and the worst moments of our lives. Sure. But, and they're there. But life, what is, what's the, the saying that life uh, happens when you're doing other things? Right. Yeah. <laughs> John Lennon. I, yeah. Life is what happens when you're pull. Yeah. Oh, right. Doing other things. Right. Yeah. Doing other um, things. Amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's such a, a, an opportunity that I feel like nobody can miss to come and see you live on stage oh, singing, thank dancing. You. I'm having not only a blast, but I've gotten like some of the craziest reviews. I mean, I, somebody said you should make a t-shirt of all your reviews because mm -hmm. they're so wacky. Like somebody said, vampires do exist because Mary Lou Henner looks like she did on taxi. It's like, it's yeah, true. don't get too close to the stage. Okay. <laughs> well, like how can you possibly have a son who's 40 years old? You oh, know? I could biologically. I definitely could. Yeah. My boys are 22 and 24 right. and they, they've seen the show a few times and they love it. And you know, it's kind of cool to have their mom on Broadway again because they were so little when I was on Broadway 16 years ago. I want to go back to your early days in Greece. Oh yeah. When Greece was first being conceived, you were in Chicago and it was not they didn't even consider it as a pre-Broadway thing no, it was no, just no, like no. a passion project oh no I, I did a lot of community theater because of the dancing school and so this one guy Jim Jacobs he was in the advertising business and he called me one day and he said Hannah I've written the show it, I'm, it may never get off the ground I wrote it about the kids I went to high school with you're a lot younger than I am but I think you could really relate to because my sister was the same age as Jim and he said uh, we're going to do it in a converted trolley barn. We think, we don't know if it's going to happen, but we want you, I want you to come. So I went there, and there were two stacks of papers about you know 10 inches a piece. One of them was songs, and the other one was, okay, let's read the book report scene. Let's read the polio shot scene. Let's read the air raid shelter scene. Let's read uh, the lunchroom, the pajama party, the, you know, the, all the different scenes. And we fashioned it into Greece, this little kind of you know, ragtag team. And then people from Broadway saw it. They invited some of us to come to New York to audition. Um, I was at the University of Chicago on four scholarships, and my father had passed away. So I wanted to, we were kind of re-identifying ourselves as, as a family. But mainly, I didn't think it was going to be a hit. That's how crazy is that? But it, it was so raw and such a Chicago show. And it was 75% book, 25% music. And then, you know, brilliant people who knew how to put a Broadway show together, like Tom Moore and Ken and Maxine and Pat Birch and Jim Jacobs, they turned it into 75% music, 25% book. So that was the start of it. It's a, done everywhere now. I feel like if, if that had happened now, as one of the people in that first room, you would be getting a check, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like for having cre helped create hey. it. Yeah, you're probably right. No, uh, right. And you're, it, was, no. it was dirtier then, right? Didn't oh, your character have I say, like a million? Can I say mm -hmm. something bad? Okay. My mother did not want to come to, she said, Mary, I don't care if you take your clothes off. I'm not seeing the show because you say fuck you in it seven times. Because <laughs> I told her that. If it had been six times, she would have. Six times, <laughs> that was the tipping point. Um, but we were like this tough gang of girls and, you, and, they, and the audience was sitting on low bleachers because it was really a converted trolley barn. It was called the Kingston Mines Company Store. And we, we'd like practically step on people's hands. And we were so, I was such a goody goody in high school. You know, little Miss, little Miss Memory with her little, you know, valedictorian kind of thing. I mean, I mean, I won an award and all. Anyway, you don't have to know about my past. But, <laughs> but, but um, it, we were, it was so much fun to play a character that was so unlike me mm -hmm. that I just, you know, I went for it. I mean, it was just, a, and I really didn't think anyone else would be able to relate to this. But here's the thing. Greece, for sure, you see yourself in one of those characters. And that's one of the things I love about getting the band back together because you see yourself in one of those characters. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody relates to one of those couples, the guy or the girl in the story. Yeah. And it's great when you have a big ensemble piece and, and there's like, you know, and, and you can tell everybody's getting along. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I love my number because I do it with all the guys. And so it reminds me of doing Roxy when I did Chicago. Yeah. 408 performances. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and of course, Taxi being the, you know, so. And all of your Taxi co-stars came to see. Well, they came, they're they coming at different times. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, yeah some yeah. of them were opening night. Yeah. I saw Carol Shane. Sure. I know. Um, I know. That's so No, amazing. it's great. And Danny, Danny, 
you know, DeVito's from Asbury Park, so we talk about Asbury Park. Oh, yeah, we have to talk about New Jersey, which is basically oh, a character it's in this show. Definitely a character. Sayreville, where the show takes place, the, the home of John Bon Jovi. And um, Greg Evigan, let's not forget of Greg. Of course, who let's did, not. Who did Grease With Me on the Road? Oh, in my Chicago. gosh. Did you insist he that says, his name get, <laughs> get added into the script that? Um, yeah, so they actually signed on as co producers. The city signed the city. on as co producers because this is like a love letter to New Jersey. I know. Um, which, you know, I can name several musicals that have New Jersey as the butt of a joke. And this one is... I think Hamilton even has everything yeah, happens in Everything Jersey. is legal in New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and in Beautiful, she says, like, I want to move to the suburbs. And he goes, don't say New Jersey. <laughs> um, so New Jersey gets a bad rap, but this is such not a love this, letter to the, to the city. And yeah, I'm so, so glad you fun. mentioned Chicago because you are one of the few people who holds the legacy of Bob Fosse in your body. You, oh, it takes a long time to get him out of there, too. I mean, it's like... <laughs> Fosse hurts. It's crazy. Yeah. When I first auditioned, I mean, they were, you know, so insistent. You had to do, like, everything. It had to be perfect. Every, You know, you, you couldn't put your your fingers out without there being, it, it, it's being equidistant mm -hmm. between each f finger. I mean, it once it's in your body, it's so hard to get out of it. But it's such such a great experience. And, yeah. and it looks so beautiful, and it's so spare, you know. Um, I mean, The choreographer Spencer Liff was here recently, and he oh. said the thing about dance is that the only way for it to live on uh, once people are gone, is to have taught it to someone physically. Yeah, you can yes. do YouTube. Yeah, you can, you know, write down the steps. But when, but it's almost like physical storytelling that has to be passed Absolutely. down generation to generation. Um, and I know, like, B.B. Newworth cares a lot about being one of the people who holds that history. Right. Right. Um, so I always feel like I'm touching a little bit of history when I meet someone who has learned those steps. Well, know. for example, you know, the Roxy walks that you do, and, and you know, I, you do them a lot during the number of Roxy, and they, they do them through the whole show. Until somebody said to physically get it in your body, imagine that you're, tre you know, you're treading water. Imagine that there's water under it. So that you get that kind of flow. And if you just watched it, you might not understand the tension that you need in your body. But having that image of water, it really made a big difference to me. Cool. You know? Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. So, or, or I always, when I teach people, because I'm teaching some of the kids in the show, some of the Fosse stuff, and I always imagine that you're between two buildings and you can only move so many inches. So you have to, like, when you put your hand to the side, that hand... It can't be out here. It can't be back here. It's got to be right to the side of you. This is how the Rockettes are taught. Like, the oh amount my gosh. of precision that they talk about. Um, and I feel like Fosse is kind of the only thing that... Sure. Uh, let's take going. a couple of questions from the audience. Sure. Okay. Anything you want? Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, when you were in school... Were you the know-it-all kid <laughs> with your memory and everything? Did, Did somebody put friends? you up to this? No. Uh, <laughs> no, it's so funny because from the time I was six years old, people would say, oh, you're such a little know-it-all. And I'd say, I'm not a know-it-all. I'm a remember-it-all. But they didn't understand what I was talking about. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I guess I was a little bit of a know-it-all because I was, my, my brother always teases me because we went to Catholic school. He always says, yeah, you were the one who was going, sister, 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 you know, raising my hand. <laughs> sister, sister, sister. You had to say, say it so fast. Yeah. Okay. But that comes from being in a big family, too. My youngest brother, there were six of us, my youngest brother still eats guarding his food. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because so, someone was going to grab something Someone was going to grab it from the youngest one. But yeah. So, yeah, I guess I was a little bit of a know-it-all. <laughs> Does that make it hard to make friends? No, I don't love it. Well, you know, my family had this crazy dancing school, oh, so yeah. everybody hung out at our house. I really, my mom taught not only adults, she taught them jazz. The, the six kids took care of, like, the, the, young, the young kids tap ballet and jazz. Um, but my mother also ta taught social dancing on Friday nights to the seventh and eighth graders at 6.30 and the high school kids at 7.30. I'm sure that every kid in my neighborhood had their first kiss somewhere near our dancing school. <laughs> so, so we were very social. And, yeah. and having six kids in a school, you know, you always like, oh, do you have a, one of the Henners? Oh, yeah, I've got a Henner, I've got a Graham, I've got a Lighten. Because, you know, those big Catholic families, you know, you had somebody in your class. Mm, cool. Yeah. Let's take Thank another you. question. Hi. Um, Hi. I was just curious about the way that you have your memory and how it, like, will impact the way that you can remember a role each and every time. And how does that affect the, um, the way you get into the headspace of a character? Oh, okay. Well, I always think, you know what a Venn diagram is, right? There's like the circle and the circle and the little space when the, the circles intersect. I think when you first start a character, you think like, okay, I'm a circle, the character's here. And you try to find what's the Venn diagram of what we do. For example, I went literally from doing Chicago into working on Annie Get Your Gun years ago. Now, 
Roxy and Annie are two completely different characters. So I found myself during Roxy, you know, wearing a lot of black and slinking around, and I thought of her as like, you know, and I'll go through all the, that checklist of, of things, like what, what utensil is she? What song does she remind you of? What house? What, what piece of furniture? Wait, what utensil things is like, she? Oh, she was definitely now. like a spoon. <laughs> you know, Roxy was like a spoon, whereas Annie was like a knife. You know what I mean? She was like a whittler. She was like a, you know, that What kind of utensil thing. is Mitch's mom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's uh, she's definitely. Well, I mean, I I bake so much in in the show. Right. She's more like a spatula, you know. She like collects a lot of people and flips them over and says, you know, I'm gonna like fix your life and stuff like that. Sorry, yeah. I, I went on a little diversion from the That's question okay. there. Yeah. But. No. So what you do is you take a character and and I'm the kind of person who loves not just because Meryl Streep does it, but I, I love to like live like the character in my own life during that time, you know. So I don't want to just put the character on when I go to work. I. I, when I was doing Chicago, I had a lot of black and slinky things. And then I moved to Annie, and I, I had more like jeans and boots and, you know, kind of a saddlebag sort of thing. Because you want to feel comfortable as the character in your own life so that then that little Venn diagram becomes this, you know, pretty soon the two circles intersect. Which is sort of brings us back to what you're wearing what today. Say, yeah. Th this could be a Mitch's well, mom, y except yes, she'd probably sure. be wearing... Oh, no, I guess she wears like, like this. Yeah. yeah. She's What's funny is that... Uh, you forget, when you don't live in New York anymore, you forget how much your feet hurt if you don't have good shoes. Seriously. You know, in L.A., you, like, have a pair of boots. It's like, yeah, or high heels or something. I'm going to be driving. I'll just, from, you know, to, from the house to the car, from the car to the event. Forget it. You are walking a lot in the city, so there's yeah. always a lot. Yeah, these ones only go on for oh, yeah. the stage. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <Yeah. laughs> then they throw on the comfortable flats again. Forget it. <laughs> we yeah. have time for one more question. Oh, just to let you know, I have seen the show. The show is amazing. Aww. You are wonderful. Thank you so much. And my question is, knowing all the things that you've done, do you have a specific like exercise routine or some sort of routine? Because you look amazing. Thank you so much. Well, She has 10 books on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the thing. My mother really instilled in all of us a love of movement. You know, Growing up with the dancing school, we just all fell in love with the movement. And the six of us, when we get together, and we don't get together, we get together at Christmas. That's the big time. And I see everybody throughout the year. We all get together, and the first thing we all do, the six of us, is a time step, sort of in <laughs> honor of our mother. And it's because we all have different disciplines but we all love to move. Um, I discovered Pilates on January the 4th of 1979. It was a Thursday, <laughs> and I fell in love with it. And so before the show, I do like a whole Pilates warm-up that just opens up my voice, and, and you know, and so I, I'd have to say it's more Pilates than anything else, mm. you know. Yeah. Probably. But seriously, like, if you want to know about how she looks so fantastic, oh, and check health. out the yeah. books because it's like Food. Um, no dairy. No dairy, um, no meat, no refined sugar, you know, and whatever you eat, eat with gusto. But there's so many things that you can, I mean, people are stuffing their faces but starving their bodies. Because if you don't eat well, your body is saying, is there a nutrient in there? I need more, 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 more. I so, remember I laughed out loud when I first heard you say that you have to either be a turkey or a wiener. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which means it's you either go cold turkey on something or you wean yourself off. You wean off yourself of it. off. But the That's phrasing true. has stuck with me and it's it just true. makes me giggle. And whenever I find myself doing something unhealthy, I'm like, all right, am I going to be a turkey or a weird? Yeah, it's true. I was I the kind of person who giggling. wanted to be cold turkey because I wanted to really feel the effect. So mm -hmm. the first thing I gave up was tab. I was drinking tab, a lot of it, in the 70s, uh, between one and two gallons a day. I mean, I would buy a six pack and finish it off like it was nothing and drink it. And so I said I could do anything for three weeks. So I went cold turkey for three weeks. Then I said, I'll try it again. I tried it, and it made me so sick that I said, I'll never, having, uh, I'll never have it again. And I never, I never had any kind of soda after that. What was the date of your last soda? <laughs> the date of my last soda, that was actually, it was before. I consider my health birthday August 15th, 1970. We're in the 70s again. 79, which was a Wednesday. I just celebrated it the other day. 39 years, no dairy products. Wow. But I actually gave up. Um, tab like a few months before so it was it was like yeah it was in right around the time you discovered Pilates yeah right around the time I discovered Pilates I was still drinking my tab then yeah <laughs> I love it I just it's, it's it's fun and I don't want to make it sound like you are like I said a party trick um, but it really is fascinating it's it's so much fun for me because like now I'll be thinking about that whole weekend of your birthday and I'll be thinking, <laughs> no and people give me dates all the time and so then it, it sort of takes me back and then I'm just 
kind of they're living it. Yeah. Which awesome. is really kind of a fun thing. So look, me. I brought the playbill from getting the band back together, oh. which I've already seen twice, um, including on opening night, which was such a special it experience. Was the after party was at Dave and Buster's. That'll <laughs> tell you something you couldn't about, hear anything. about what this show is. It's just a ton of yeah. fun. Um, and I also just want to take one moment to acknowledge the incredible depth of the ensemble. Oh uh, my gosh. Some they're... of the best performers on Broadway. Um, and and the you know there are a few there are a few leading roles and but every single ensemble member down to a person is excellent extraordinary and I, I mean some of these kids have seven wigs because they change characters so yeah. often and and people in the audience don't even realize it's the same person but our buddies you know Ryan Duncan and Tad Wilson all of them they're mm -hmm. incredible and there's a 16 year old boy who's a phenom he is yeah. just like sexy and fun I shouldn't say sexy 16 <laughs> no, I, didn't, I mean the little girls talking about. the little girls there's a real age range in our show so I guess there's someone for everybody you know yeah. there's somebody that you you really like gravitate toward so, uh, you know what I meant I mean he's like a, <laughs> He's like a heart. He's gonna grow up to That's be a what heartbreaker, I meant to say. is what you I meant. meant. To say that. Yeah, and uh, there, there, there is something for everyone in the show. Everyone, go see it. Uh, it's at the Belasco Theater. Getting the band back together on Broadway. Thank you, Mary Thank Lou Henner. Thank you so much. You're so much fun.